Hi, my name is Chemeke Rize. I'm a third year medical student, and I am here to tell you to subscribe to Sir Majesty Easy World, or science is fun. I'm going to take a look at is Lamarck's theory of organic evolution. Jim Baptist Lamarck theory of organic evolution. Jim Baptist Lamarck's theory. So otherwise known as Lamarckism. Lamarck's theory of organic evolution. So Lamarck, Jim Baptist Lamarck was actually the first to summon the courage to tell people that God did not create everything the way they are. He tried to use another means to explain how come some organisms come to be, how they develop some structures. So if you don't call this Lamarck, so you can call it Lamarckism. It was actually propounded by Jim Baptist Lamarck around 1801. So I'll give you the summary of his theory and then discuss it under three sub-theories. Some really Jim Baptist Lamarck's theory is a theory that proposes that uh, organisms develop structures by the process of use and disuse of existing structures in response to a need that continually makes itself felt in the environment. And then this structure or this character developed in this form are subsequently transferred to the next generation or are transferred to the subsequent generation. Let me take it again. This Lamarck theory holds that organisms develop structures by the process of use and disuse. Due to constant need of such structure, so what, what is the pressure making them to develop that structure? The, the environmental demand. Maybe you are in water, it demands you have to swim. So that need to swim will make you start using one part of your body and eventually develop a new structure, or rather stop using a part of existing body and develop another new form. And this is what we call use and disuse. Then transfer this character acquired in this form to subsequent generations. So Lamarck's theory is going to be discussed under three headings, but most of your textbook discuss it only two headings, forgetting the other one. Now, the Lamarck's theory, I'm going to break it down into one. Theory of need. Theory of need. Then two, theory of use and disuse. Then three, theory of acquired character or traits inheritance. Now, theory of need, theory of use and disease, theory of acquired traits inheritance are the breakdown of the summary I gave you about Lamarck. Among these three, theo these three theories, only one is true. Mark what I'm saying. This theory is the only true theory. Theory of use and disuse is the only true theory in Lamarck's theory of evolution. Other ones, one and three probably are actually fallacy, but commonly you tell they start discussing one two and three, neglecting that of uh, number one. First, theory of need is that organisms do not just develop structure, they develop it because the environment in which they live presses them to develop that. So that is, let's take for example that a, 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 a frog or a toad, initially they don't have webs according to this before within their digits, but as they continuously visit water, there should be a need to have web to enable them to swim. That is theory of need. The snakes were once walking on leg, not as slender or narrow as they are today, but due to the fact that they have to crawl through tiny places, therefore, that is a need. They start now stretching. Stretching, that is use. They now gain that elongated body today. Remember, for those Christian believers, remember also, the Bible recorded that the serpent was once walking on leg, but after God causes it, they now crawl. Maybe this man tried to coincide with the Christians here, yeah. but uh, he was saying his own thing in his own way and in his own belief, just like you have your own freedom, provided your own belief do not affect or harm the people around you, rule the world. 
period, show love. Don't use your belief to kill others and don't force belief on anybody. Remember, I'm teaching you what is written down. Okay? I've explained theory of need because they are all connected. Then theory of use and disuse, like I told you, even the giraffe, that of giraffe is very clear. You will understand it very well. The ancient giraffe, according to Lamarck, once have short neck and short leg. Their limbs, that their are four limbs and their hind limbs, and also their neck, they are all short. That's the ancient giraffe, according to Lama. But there is a need for them to stretch their neck and get foliage from a bull. They start stretching that their neck. That stretch is called use. And eventually, due to the fact that they are stretching it constantly, they acquire that character by having long neck. So giraffe we see in the world today have long neck because they constantly stretched. This is according to Lama. This explanation is quite doubtful. Even if you are mad, you wouldn't believe it. But just get the information for your exams. Hi, my name is Cheryl. And I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Star Majesty Easy World Science And you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It makes science so easy. Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science ain't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. <laughs> Another thing about Star Majesty Easy World Science channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents. Guess the best part, if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials. And another thing is, when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anybody. If you want to order, just look at the number on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below. Don't forget to share, of course, obviously there's love in sharing. Thank, Thank you. you! See you there! <laughs> okay. I wonder if it's only the giraffe that were in the world then to stretch the neck. But all the same, let's just keep rhyming with this man. I will tell you why I say that this theory is the only true theory. Then, as they stretch this neck, they gained long neck and long legs. The people around asked him, how come the giraffe we see today have long neck and long legs? He now convinced them by using number three theory which is theory of acquired traits inheritance. That is, that character acquired by the ancient giraffe. Remember, acquired character is the character that is not inborn in you. Maybe you are born black like me. I can start applying bleaching cream and or plastic surgery and I'll, I, I will gain a, a fair skin color. I will look like the whites. That is what we call acquired. My children will never inherit such thing. I got by the influence of the environment, not by my gene. But this man believed that the characters acquired by the Asian giraffe by stretching the neck was transferred to the generations we are seeing in the world today, such that at best they don't need to go back and then stretch their neck again, that they will take that one that the Asian ones have done. And that's what we call theory of acquired traits inheritance. This is 100% lie, both scientifically and otherwise. It can only happen when there is magic or in, a, in fictional stories, okay? Now, small, small. I'm going to lay emphasis more on theory of use and disuse. Theory of use and disuse states that structures, body parts, or organs become well-developed, more functional, stronger, when constantly used. That's when constantly being made use of. That is that use theory here. Then becomes weaker, less developed, may disappear, or may degenerate when not used for a long time. That is theory of use and disuse. I take it again. Theory of use and disuse states that body structures, organs, or body parts become stronger, more functional, well developed, more efficient, when constantly used, but becomes weaker, less developed, and less functional and may disappear when not used for a long time. When not used for a long time means disuse, disuse. That is not being used for a long time. Just like Lama tried to use a snake to explain disuse, that they stopped using their leg and now start stretching their body. Because of the fact that they stopped using their leg, that's for the snakes, the legs disappear. And that's why the snakes we are having in the world today 
don't have legs. Okay? So, this theory, I remain, I, I maintain what I say, that it is only true theory. Watch it. Let me explain it to you for you to understand this. If you constantly use a body part, if you are a student and you constantly study, I usually use this to advise you to study, never to underestimate yourself. Theory of use and disuse and conditioned reflex is what I use to advise all of my students to become majestic and to know that you can't just come and read once and it will enter. So whenever you read and it's not entering, remember what I'm going to explain now, it is true. When you constantly read your book as a student, that book you get used to it, your brain will be more functional the more you use it to read that particular subject. Eventually, you start doing some things, you start saying some things, like I'm teaching you now without any instructional material. Why? Because my brain has been constantly used in discussing chemistry and biology. And now I'm an authority, I command it. Some might imagine how can this man do this? Nothing because it is just because of theory of use and disuse, and you can also achieve the same thing. So, as a student, when you don't read for a long time, remember during holiday, if you leave school and leave your book, on coming back, even writing the date becomes difficult for you on your notes. Why? Because you have stopped using that hand and your pen, so you are no longer used to write. That is disuse. But when you are constantly writing, you write where you spare where. Remember when you are a kid, the way you can spare, they hold your hand and you are moving. But now, can you imagine you signing even a signature? The speed with which I wrote this. Why? Because I've been constantly using this hand. That is theory of use. It is true. When you constantly use your body parts, and that is what we call practice and training. So when you constantly use body parts, they become more functional and when developed. Then, coming to sports. If you keep using your muscle constantly, they become stronger and well developed. Just like building your muscles, here we have the pectoralis major, other muscles here, the detoid. You can improve on them, the trapezoid, the stenogler, the mastoid muscles. You can improve on them by constantly stretching them, contracting, taking weights, doing the normal sports according to directives. Before you know it, like the wrestlers, you develop large muscles. So this theory, they might ask you this in exam, uh, whose theory supports the idea that an athlete that constantly exercises will have large muscles more than another athlete that do not exercise constantly? The answer is Jim Baptist Lamar. And that theory is called theory of use and disuse. Now, let's bring it to life match that you watch, maybe football. There are great players we see in the world today, maybe persons of Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, and even you, I wouldn't know if you know how to play. But what matters is this, when some of these great players sustain injury, they are no more playing. So before they come back to the match, they must undergo serious training. They can't just come back immediately. And some may tell you that they are just returning from injury. As they return, they don't perform marvelous as they have been doing. Even the so-called the greatest player in the world, when you allow him not to play for six good months, Bring him into the field. He won't even track ball very well. That is theory of use and disuse. So that is automatically true. Though Lamarck's explanation makes it look and doubtful, of course. So now, having gotten that, when you stop this, when you stop using the muscle, it will also do what? Disappear. That's what I'm trying to say. If you don't use your body parts well, it won't perform well until you constantly start doing what? Using it. So, whose theory uh, supports the idea that the large muscles gained by an athlete will be lost if the athlete is placed on the case of POP after sustaining injury? Yes, an athlete, when he sustains injury, when he's recovering, the muscles will reduce. That is theory of use and disuse. So, from all angles, I think I've convinced you that this is a true theory. And why did I lay emphasis on that? I've, I've given you a guide on how to read and develop yourself. Constantly expose your brain to a particular thing. It will get used to that with time. God bless you. We now move to the theory of acquired traits inheritance. This one simply says that organisms inherit characters that were acquired by their parents. Meaning that if you have your finger caught by an accident or while slicing onion, 
in the kitchen, that all your children will come out with the hand cut. That's the meaning here. And both of us know that this is 100% lie. Then, in science, you don't just say it's a lie. In exam, see how the question will be. Which of the following theory is a fallacy in Lamarck's theory? A fallacy are two, but in exam, they usually neglect this. Theory of acquired traits acquired trait inheritance is a fallacy, meaning it never happened because of his explanation on how the giraffe transferred the character to the generations that did not stretch again. If your father was a carpenter and you never visited your father while doing the carpentry work, if your father gives birth to you and you grow outside the, 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 the workbench, you can never push a nail into a wood, even though your father can do that. So it's not true. You must learn. There's a difference between heritable character and acquired character. So this is not true. Argument against Lamarck's theory is, you choose this as an answer, theory of acquired trait inheritance. Then, what disproves this theory is August Wilsman's theory of continuity of the germ plasma. You see the name there on the screen. August Wilsman's theory of the continuity of the germ plasma. After this man said this, August Wilsman brought two mice, male and female, and rendered them artificially tailless by cutting the tails and allowed them to mate. That is male and female mice. When they mate, they gave birth to offsprings that were all tails. They came out with a, a lot of tail. That is very long as their parents initially. Cutting it means Wilsman is giving them artificial tailless. That's acquired. They were born with the tail. Now, cutting it. So, if the long neck can come in children, in the offspring of giraffe, it shows that the tail is supposed to come out. But unfortunately, the first generation all come with tail. He did it, he cut that generation again, he repeated this for almost getting to 100 generations, if I'm not exaggerating, but they keep coming out with tails. And that means that this theory is not true. This now led to August Wiesman dividing our body parts into two, which are actually germplasm and somatoplasm. He now made us to know that a change in our somatoplasm, our somatoplasm means every other part of our body except our sex cell. So your head, the, the cells in your blood, the cell, your muscles, all the parts of your body apart from your sex cell is your somatoplasm then your germ plasm is only made up of the sex cell. He now told us that the part of us that will continue in our generation is our germ plasm, not our somatoplasm. You look like your father, not because your father brought his legs and gave to you directly. No, your father only donated a germ cell. That is, we take it as sex cell. In this case, a sperm or an egg, which now carry the whole information. So if there is a change that that have occurred in that sex cell, your generate you will inherit it. But if your father during the course of living sustains injury in every other somatoplasm, it will not continue. So the part of us that continues is our germ plasm and not our somatoplasm. And hence, he made the theory known as continuity of the germ plasm. And that's what discredits Lamarck's theory of acquired traits eh? inheritance. It's very much obvious because if this is true, Nobody will be born poor. At least your parents will go and gather the whole money while they are getting your mom pregnant. They make sure that the money is on them. You will be born with the same money. <laughs> Isn't it funny? So that is it about Lamarck's theory of organic evolution. So, and I've also told you their weaknesses and the truths lying in them. Remember to ask your questions in the comment box and also to book for your own private classes. I will handle you very well in science, especially in chemistry and biology medical related courses including human anatomy biochemistry check them here they are all available here for you thank you as we go to the next most popular theory of evolution and that is charles darwin's theory of evolution I love you. Thank you for watching. You are Alpha and Omega.